Beretta. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, they are one of the biggest and best gun making companies in the world. Over the last few years, they've been producing some amazing competition guns, the 694, the DT-11, and they've been performing very, very well indeed. However, they've been a little quiet on their game and hunting lines. A new Silver Pigeon 1 didn't really cut it, and the SL3 is way out of being affordable for many of us. I've been thinking there's going to be a mid-level game gun coming from these guys at some point, and today is the day it's released. And so in this box is the 2020 Beretta 687 Silver Pigeon 3. I should outline at this point that the Beretta Silver Pigeon 3 was one of my favourite Berettas of all time for, you know, looks versus price. It was attainable, it was beautiful, so this gun's got a hell of a lot to live up to because it was one of the Berettas I've owned and actually enjoyed owning. So, come in, let's have a look. So the case is nothing to write home about, but it does come with sling swivels, oil and three spare chokes, plus the two in the gun is a full set of five special little barrel clip, and that is it. So let's throw the case away and have a look over the different components we've got to play with. So the woodwork, there's a few special new things about the woodwork on the Silver Pigeon 3. It is mostly, the new finish is a new gloss finish. It's a satiny sort of gloss, and that sounds a bit stupid, and you also need to see this outside. Most wood comes up better with a bit of natural sunlight over the top of it, and it is actually a really nice finish. It looks like they filled the grain a little bit better. Certainly, there are no sort of grip marks. It is a good quality of finish. This gun, yeah, it looks the part. The woodwork is a grade two and a half in Beretta's world, which puts it about a grade three in everyone else's mind. It's nice, it's special, it's a little bit nicer than standard. It's got a bit of character, but it's still gonna be superbly strong, which is what the 680 series has always been about. Strength, reliability, and just generally being solid. The forend, same wood finish, same wood grade, is that rounded American style finish, really nice, very sleek looking, and the grip on it, in fact, the checkering on all of it is laser done. And I suppose this is where my first gripe will come in is that I always preferred the sharp old looking checkering uh, as opposed to this rounded stuff. However, I am warming to it. I am warming to it. I mean, in a world with laser checkering, you can pretty much do what you want. So might as well do something a bit different rather than trying to emulate the classic designs. And like I said, if you don't like new stuff and you don't adapt and learn to appreciate more modern stuff and you're stuck in the past, you might as well get back under that rock we spoke about at the beginning. It feels really good and actually kind of looks all right. It looks all right. Drop dimensions are at 35 and 55 and it is available in right and left handed. Something that I noticed is that it comes up that it looks a lot higher from the sight plane than the 35-55. So I know you can take away from that whatever you will, but that's a good thing. It's nice, it's got just enough cast on it to write home about, but it is inherently a little bit straight, which is okay, right? You don't want to commit too much either way. These can be cast, they can have all sorts done to them. The end. The grip, same grip as most other Berettas, a little bit longer, if anything, and that might sound a bit silly, but this feels a little bit longer than the, uh, the well, certainly the competition grips. It's a little bit more open, it's nice. I like it. Pad-wise, comes with a micro core, good, solid, very unexciting pad that fits very well to the stock. But they've been around a little while now and, well, why change something if it is not broke? I like that a lot. Next, the action. So the engraving, the more than the action itself, this is where it gets interesting because I thought I would be a little bit depressed with it. The last 2019 Silver Pigeon 1, I wasn't particularly enamored with or perhaps it was just a bit of a shock to the system. This one, on the other hand, is gorgeous. It actually 
exceeds the old one. It's more modern, it's more lustrous, there's more to it, its technical uh, execution is perfect, and obviously that's because it's done on a five axis laser engraver. Laser engraving can be a dodgy one. However, these guys have gotten around that by having two different depths and a really pleasant, really subtle design mixed with some real technical stuff that you perhaps wouldn't be able to get either with rolled or a more basic engraver. So, you have a pheasant, it's the clouds in the background that do it for me. I think that's a really beautiful touch, just enough shading to make it look kind of Bellino-esque, but it's not. You've got a nice texture down the bottom or intersect with a few branches and leaves and grass and a big cockbird bursting from color. On the front, you've got a floral pattern with a bit of a canthus, and I love this little border here, almost makes it look like a double beveled action face. It's quite nice. You get a little plane here around the fences, and then on the top lever, you have the same floral design, and we're not gone for like a classic rose and scroll here. It's like a very nice different style of bouquet. And where it's laser engraved, these guys have kind of thrown out trying to emulate an old style of engraving. And have just said, look, we can do new and exciting stuff that you couldn't do with an engraver. And that I think is what I find most exciting about this is that it isn't trying to emulate something old, but rather have come up with a new design and said, we can do this better than they can. We're going to actually do it, which is lovely. You have straight borders down your safety tang there, and actually a really nice secondary circle above your top lever, and it's really nicely put together. It's really quite, I don't know how to use the word, but it's quite cool. It's stylish, which I expect nothing less from. On the off side, we have, I presume, a partridge bursting from a little hedge, and again, similar levels of detail, probably a little more detail on this plate uh, in the game scene, but really nice very nicely done indeed actually a really beautiful thing on the base plate beretta sign a little bit of florally acanthusiness going on and the same on the trigger guard i must admit i really like it similar pattern on the four end iron and in fact it's I, like I said, it's fair to say that the guys there are now getting much braver with their laser engraving work and actually coming up with some really smart designs that they're not afraid of, as opposed to upsetting people. And it works so much better than trying something old. The barrels are a three inch chambered, 30 inch or 28 inch 12 ball. 20 balls are coming apparently, which will be quite smart. They are a steelium material, which I think is cold, just means cold hammer forged, made of quite lightweight, tri alloy magic. That, not that it matters to many of us. Most importantly, they are steel proofed, superior steel proofed. So these are a future proof barrel set. You can go out and make as much noise with pretty much any pellet type of material you want, providing you put slightly more open chokes in than are in it. The barrels are steelium, Ultimal HP, 30 inch, Multi-choke in this particular edition. Comes with five chokes, as I said. Slim line, game rib, single bead sight, auto safety, selective single trigger in gold. Yeah, you know, all in all, a recipe for a good Beretta. I mean, no one's ever gonna knock the 680 series. I've never seen a bad one. I've never shot, well, I've shot some fairly odd co configurations that I didn't think were perhaps were best. But one thing you do know when you buy a 680 action Beretta is you've got parts in every gun shop in the world. They are solid as you like, the lockup is fine, and they are probably, probably sub two grand, one of the, sub two and up, sub three grand, probably one of the best actions out there, period. And certainly the most reliable and probably the most hard wearing. You know, the DT range is probably a touch better but they're big money by comparison. Money-wise, full retail on one of these is just under two, three. As with all things Beretta, there will be bargains to be found or a little bit less to be had if you go into your local gun shop and you'll act nicely. I like this gun. Balance-wise, it is not over the hinge pin. It is in fact like an inch, three quarters of an inch in front of the hinge, a full inch in front of the hinge pin. That's um, quite front heavy. Uh, that is my only downside of it at this point, that I feel like that's gonna be its undoing in the 30 inch. However, when you mount it and swing it, it doesn't feel front heavy, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good indeed. So this gun is seven and a half pounds total weight. That's all right. I mean, it feels light in the hand. As soon as you mount it up, it's got a bit of weight, weight behind it, which is, it's all right, but that's inherent with that front end weight as you feel it in your left hand, which will be interesting to see how that shoots because that can go one of two ways, uh, depending on how the gun sort of boils down. 
front heavy isn't front heavy isn't front heavy, it can be good or bad. The wood to metal fit is good. The metal to metal fit is standard Beretta, which is plenty adequate. I like, actually, I like. So let's go and shoot it because, well, the bottom line is I actually want to shoot this one. It's got a lot to live up to. So first off, I thought this clay ground closed at three, it closes at two. So we've got about 15 minutes of trying. I'm 50, 50 cartridges in. I actually really like it. First impressions, swing, exceptional, exceptional swing. Uh, the balance there actually, where it's a little bit front heavier, it's nice. It's really nice. It's not noticeably front heavy in the hands, which is strange because most it doesn't feel lumpy or horrible. It feels good. Secondly, it shoots higher than expected. For a game gun, it shoots sporter high, which is bang on. And thirdly, recoil is minimal. And at this point, I'll let you into a little secret, and that is that I wanted to hate this gun. I was such a fan of the original, but I couldn't help but want to absolutely despise it because you know, newer is worse and I'm getting older and that's the attitude you should have. But this actually shoots so much better than the original. That one is the exception that I keep missing. Feel like I got Simon Reinhold stood behind me telling me, mind of no mind, mind of no mind. To move into that zone of peak performance, almost complete relaxation and absolute focus at the same time. And that's very hard to do. Yeah. That is the zone minute left we're going to chuck a few pairs instead this gun is a perler an absolute perler it loves these compacts like properly loves them i feel a little bit like ant mcclernand i just can't seem to miss i'm gonna pick myself a fight I really, 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 actually do like this quite a lot. Last shots, Sash is going to press them for me. Mathistic pair. Beast mode. So those of you who follow the channel for a while will know that sometimes I give a review straight after shooting the gun. I have learned that that is a mistake, so I'm going to go home and dwell on this. And uh, I'll speak about it tomorrow, once I mold it over. Okay, so I've been doing some thinking. And I have got in front of me an old Silver Pigeon 3 and a Silver Pigeon 3 687 2020 edition. Two different incarnations of the same named gun. And I'm sat here looking at them and I'm going, this 687 Silver Pigeon 3 used to look really, really beautiful. And I used to think there wasn't many Berettas could hold a candle to it at the same price point. Well, here's the interesting thing is that this Beretta Silver Pigeon 3 not only now retails for the same as this did 10 years ago, which is interesting, but pound for pound looks just as good, if not actually a little bit better. Actually a little bit better. The woodwork looks more lustrous. Whether you like that or not, that's down to you. The engraving is a more elegant, beautiful pattern than this. And again, I, I've always liked the fact this was a campus and game scene. This has kind of taken that and put a twist on it, but I like that. It's nice. The, the barrels on this, well, you guys all know my opinion on barrel technology, but there's got to be something in it when a seven and a half pound gun doesn't hurt when you shoot it. I mean, there's only a 28 gram load, so you're not asking for a lot, but I shoot compacts a lot. In fact, I shoot a lot of 28 gram loads, and I know how much they kick in different guns, and it varies a huge amount, which says a lot about the way a gun barrel goes. I think these barrels were what? 
18.6. So they're slightly overboard. It's not, it's not mega. So you're not looking at huge overboring to compensate for that. It's just a half decent barrel profile that seems to mix really nicely with the rest of the gun. There you go. You know, all in all, I'd say actually, we are moving forward from a Silver Pigeon 3 into a Silver Pigeon 3 2020, which is good. So to be honest, I was left actually thinking about this gun quite a lot. And that in itself says quite a lot. I see a lot of guns on a daily basis and it takes, well, it takes a little bit to actually impress and make me want to think about a gun when I get home. And this one had me there thinking, you know what, actually I really do like it. The way it handled was interesting. So there's positives and negatives to that. That front end weight makes the gun feel like a heavier gun in the movement, which is nice, without inherently having to carry an eight pound gun all day. A gun that handles like a heavy gun, that feels like a light gun, is an interesting thing, and actually quite a hard thing to master without just making a gun that feels either clumsy or just a bit miserable in the swing. The only downside to that is that you have to think about your technique in that a front end heavy gun does, or it does tend to lend to you pushing the barrels around as opposed to moving with the gun because you haven't got that back end weight. And that's the only thing I noticed with it is that sometimes I was a little bit sloppy with the way I was moving the gun. However, I probably, I don't, I don't know how many percent do you reckon I hit, Sash? Few? All of them. I mean, I didn't miss many. And I'm not even saying I didn't miss many. I really did summon the spirit of one in eight ant at this point, and it came together. And a gun that can make you do that the first time out is a good thing. I liked it. So the things that stand out about this gun most for me, firstly, the fact that it didn't feel like there was any recoil, which is a nice thing in a light gun. That's important. Probably more than that, the sight plane and sight picture were exceptional. And to be honest, I didn't hate the way it handled. As soon as you just you just couldn't be that lazy with it, I suppose. But I really liked it. It was quite hard to miss with, and I'm no great shot. But this was a great gun. And those that know me will say that I don't say that lightly. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video, and perhaps become a channel member because you want to support what we do. Guys, take care.